You strip the engine out. You strip the catalytic converter out. You strip all the brakes and all that sort of thing so the thing is no longer an environmental hazard. <laughs> this is crazy. Where are the trees? You take that stuff and you actually go to the scrapyard with it. You get just as much money. So you've at, you're at your break even point. So essentially you get the cabin for free. It does have a little bit of a sway. It's like the perfect tree fork. Waterproof, it's sound nearly proof. It's like got insulation, it's watertight. I think it would bring tailgating to a whole new level. Check this view. Turn it over. Round two, what do you, do you think this is gonna start? Let's hope so. We'll never know till we try. You have the magic touch. So what I did is actually I, uh, I charged this guy up. It's an old tractor battery and uh, Give it more of some juice to see if we, we need more juice. If you guys are just joining me, you guys probably think that this old Dodge Caravan is just that, an old Dodge Caravan. But you'd be wrong. This thing is one of the most advanced camping things ever. In previous episodes, we've taken this old Dodge Caravan and we've turned it in to the ultimate traveling glamper companion. This thing has everything it needs to be self-sustaining. It has a refrigerator in it. It has a bed. It has full gamut of entertainment. The thing even has a wood stove for those cold winter months. So what we did was we took this old Dodge Caravan that was a little rough but it was drivable and uh, we first started off by gutting it mostly completely. Uh, we left the driver's seat, we took out the passenger seat and we took out the back bench seats. We took out the flooring, we installed really nice flooring and then we crafted a bed out of some old pallet wood and uh, then we decked it out with all the amenities. We included a TV, we included a, a refrigerator, a cooking station, uh, a solar system on the roof, a battery pack, everything you need to go stealth camping. And then we took it on the road. We went on an adventure and uh, we stayed in it overnight and it was awesome. But everything that awesome generally comes to an end. The old van is, is tired. We actually had uh, a mechanic take a look at it and it turns out um, there's not really anything great about the mechanic side of it. The, the transmission shot, the, um, the tires are bald, the brakes don't really work anymore. The, um, what's that, the engine coolant um, is, is non-existent. It actually just overheats at random. And, uh, well, the power windows don't work anymore and the radio gets busted. It's really quite sad. But when one door closes, another door opens. We are going to turn this van into the ultimate tree fort. But first, we got to do some work. We've got to make it a little lighter because we want to make this thing fly. Why is it ticking? Hope it's not a bomb. <laughs> Needs a little bit of vitamin G. Maybe it'll start now. Maybe like for some reason we got no batteries on it now. Let's just see. No, it's like dead as a doornail. Dead, dead, dead. It's not even a battery issue. It's like it doesn't start. It's like 25 bucks worth of gas right there. All right, let's give it a whirl. All right, well, we gave it the old college try. We uh, failed to get it starting. Started even with a battery charger with a supplemental battery. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it just didn't work. Maybe it needs to be shaken. Mm -hmm. Well. Feel free to, feel free to t tell them whatever you want. 
You got a little, we got a little bit of a drive? Okay, okay I'll, so I'll do what I can. Well, there's your problem. Do you think the emergency brake does work, Don? I don't it's, know down, it's down. But like, can you push it all the way down? I guess we can't accidentally lock it up more. Do is there a button? There's probably like a, is, is there a, maybe that's what that little bungee cord is for, Don. And then hook up, hook on the bungee cord. Okay. The bungee cord has to be hooked ah, up to the parking brake. Oh, look at that. So that, that was a feature right there. This is, uh, yeah, the, uh, that, that's the lever. Yeah, the, the heat there. Okay, so we shouldn't be skidding now. Let's see if our wheels are actually moving. Nope, that didn't help. Yeah, okay. Apparently he doesn't care. So here we go. Skidding along. Well, it's not the lightest thing to tow. Well, the back wheels are locked up. I think it's been sitting too long. Maybe it'll free itself up. Maybe it won't. Steers pretty well for no power steering. Oh, we've got a bit of a rattle. Whoa. The camera went down. But it? Was it, was it, what was it, the, uh... Well, I think it might be in the front end. What do you think it is? I don't know. It could be just something in the glove box. Oh, oh like a mouse? <laughs> no, 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 not a Oh, like, oh, maybe we they get the tie rod ends or something. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. It's well. not something serious. Yeah, we wouldn't want a, a wheel bearing, maybe. Bane of a mechanic's existence is having mosquitoes with the greasy fingers because they land on your face and then, and then you touch them. And then you get greasy face. I think it's that thing. Is this where the, this is where the ticking is going. I'm gonna unscrew everything that ten millimeter bolt. Well, if you guys haven't figured it out yet. We are going to try to lighten this van a little bit so we can get it up high because it's no longer traveling. It's got some issues and uh, it's got to be, it's got to be lightened in order to make it go where we want it to go. But first, I think we got to pull the engine, the tranny, but uh, anyways, I know it's got to go. Got to get the tranny out. Do you know how to get the tranny out, Don? Nope. I've never done any mechanic stuff, so I thought this would be really cool. Actually, I think it's... Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to me to take apart a uh, van. Don't, have you ever taken apart a, a, a vehicle? No. All right, so we're gonna put aside the cool looking things because maybe we could, we could have a game of naming what these parts are because I'm never gonna get clean. Well, as it turns out, it's harder to take an engine out than I anticipated. We've been working on it for about, uh, I don't know, six hours now. Combined? Ah! And of course the compressor would turn on. Ah! Like I was saying, it's taken a little bit longer than I thought. Well, I didn't really know how long it took to take an engine out. I've never tried it before, but I've always kind of wanted to. It's kind of cool. It's really dirty. You know what? There's always a sneaky bolt. There's a sneaky bolt. And what I've found is they use different types of bolts like everywhere like on the same part there's like four or five different types of bolts it's really like it it's a it's a testament to you know why why would they do that i got a pretty good setup i've got uh i got all my stuff from princess auto i got all the ratchets and the air guns and air hoses and stuff so i'm pretty well set up that way but i've never taken a car apart I just keep plugging away, keep taking the engine out. Ideally, I want it to get it as light as possible, and I believe the engine is the heaviest part. Well, that's one heck of a way to change an oil filter. Oh, it's coming out. The oil didn't come out of the engine. 
All right, we're at start of day two. I talked to my buddy last night and uh, he was indicating to me that it should take an experienced person uh, four hours to remove an engine. I am not an experienced person. This is the first time disassembling a car. He told me to take the tires off and then go in here and do some things. And I found the forbidden lollipop. I don't even know what this thing is, but it's dirty. It's got some goo on it. I, I, no, I don't know. It's kind of neat, it's heavy. And it's got uh, like little wheels on it. Can you name this thing? What the heck is this thing? I think it was attached to that other thing. That looks like an angry spring. I'm not gonna play with that thing. Look at, look, it's like a, it's like a bull, it's like a bullhorn. Wow, it's kind of neat. It's a neat shape. I think that's the forbidden spring though. I don't think you play with that spring. We're just gonna leave that spring alone. You know that scene in Terminator 2 where he goes and he takes the X-Acto knife and he goes, and he goes, and then, blah, and then he, I, I imagine he pulls this thing out and it goes nah. That's where I think I've seen this. This is like the elbow joint where he pulls his hand right off. Ooh, give it the heebie-jeebies. That's what we're dealing with. That thing is right there. I think it's attached, and uh, I don't think the, uh, I don't think that's attached, which is the uh, muffler system. We got it strapped around the frame. So we've been shaking and shaking and shaking. And as you can see, the strap is firmly around the frame. Ay, ay, ay.
make this thing fly, we gotta lighten her up a bit. So I'm gonna take some unnecessary parts out of the engine compartment. quite a bit. As it turns out, we've taken all the brakes out and so there's no ability to make this thing stop. So instead, we're gonna get Don to drive. And so Don, you can do some evasive movements. Daredevil. But no stopping, because there's no stopping. So just steer towards a tree to stop or like Fred Flintstone sort of variety where you just kind of drag your feet on the ground. It's a really wheelie cart. Like, I don't know if you've ever pushed a car before, but that's... We can just pull this thing. Maybe, not. Maybe that's how I'll hook it in. <laughs> All right. Go. Ah. Who's steering? Wait, 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 wait. Ah, go to the building. Maybe you can pull, I'll steer it. You're adding too much weight. <laughs> There's something dragging. Go backwards. What are we? What's that sound? We said grinding. Something grinding. Maybe that's our, that's our like anchor. You know what? We could anchor it. Just if we need to stop, we just throw an anchor out the side and hook around the tree like a like a dog sled. Gonna, I thought I was gonna just nose dive down oh. in the ditch, but and I kept going. Yeah, no, it, it was fine. Look how close it is to that tree. 
good parking, Don. Oh. I even just touched the mirror. <laughs> it's very warm in there, though. The uh, air's not working. The air's not working? Oh, did we take it? We took out the AC coil. We should have left the AC coil in there. Why does he want to go on that tree? What's going to happen here, Don? I'm not sure. Well, give her a whirl. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Maybe let it go, and maybe maybe it'll it'll flat it'll just find its its level. Release it. I'll bring you guys up to speed. What we've done is we've cut a couple of trees off that were dead standing and we've cut them off around eight feet tall. And now the plan is to install a couple of two by 10 beams up there, lag bolted to the top of that to give ourselves a little bit of racking resistance. And then what the plan is is to take the van and stick it up top there. And that gives us a perfect vantage point for camping and well, whatever else you want to do up a tree. It's going to be the ultimate tree fort. This van is gonna fly. It's gonna fly. Well, it's gonna fly eight feet tall. We just gotta cut it and uh, ensure that they're parallel to each other. We have about seven feet between uh, both axles, so the wheels, and um, that's where it's gonna sit. Hopefully, you gotta stay tuned for that. Really got a plan. It's a plan. Not sure, we'll see. As always, right? All right, that's where we're at. We've got our uh, two beams set in place. All we need to do now is put a couple pieces of blocking between them to kind of join them together. So we got six inches there, five and a quarter on the other side. And then that'll allow this section here to be one continuous beam. And uh, we're gonna add some lag bolts from here to here to secure these guys in place. And we also have a notch 
in the tree itself in order to support the weight of the car. So, in pretty good shape. So I've got everything bolted together. I've put a cross member at the back side to kind of consolidate the whole thing. I've added some 3 8 inch threaded rod through the thing and I've bolted them together to kind of consolidate this and then I've added blocking and nailed the heck out of it in order to give myself some stiffness. And then I left the front of this thing open because I have to somehow get the van up here and I believe if I put something across here it's going to be in the way. an idea how strong these things are. I can jump on them. If that's any indication of how it's like what 150 pounds jumping, the car's gonna sit right about here. Alright Donnie's gotta lift it now. Yeah. Got any we ideas? Got strap. We got a strap here. So. Just lift this. We'll yeah. you go one side, I'll pull the other side. How are we gonna lift this thing? Like like <laughs> Build a ramp? Build a ramp up top there? Like maybe, I don't know, like a sling in the trees? Snatch block? Helicopter? What are those helicopters called? The Sikorsky? Sikorsky. Sikorsky heavy lift helicopter? Just kind of pluck it in right from up there and just kind of dangle it down? Unfortunately, I don't have any of those things at my disposal. I do have a little orange tractor there that won't lift it. Um, hmm. Give me some thinking. All right, so I've done some thinking and I did some reaching out to my buddy and uh, I asked him if I, he could help me move some scrap metal. And it turns out he's a busy guy. So he's like, well, you can move some scrap metal. So what he did is he lent me this thing over here. It's the Volvo gray thing. I don't know, it's a skid steer. It's a skid steer Volvo thing. And he says it might lift it. It might not. It might tip over. It might not. <laughs> I don't exactly know what's going to happen. I have very limited experience driving one of these things. Um, but uh, here goes nothing, I guess. What, Don, what, what could go wrong with this? What's the, what's the potential? I can hardly see anything. Nothing going wrong. It's just yeah. a solid plan. Yeah. So what Don's going to do is uh, you're going to step back and watch. Because there's nothing really you can do if this thing goes sideways. Like if it starts to tip, what are you gonna, nothing. You're just gonna watch it and just go like, yeah, it's tipping. Because fortunately with the skid steer inside the cage, you're somewhat protected. So if the van decides to kind of tip towards me, it's going to land on the roof and uh, I will have some explaining to do, but otherwise I'll be safe from the van squishing me. I think this is a solid plan. What do you, can you, can you foresee something going wrong? You're, you're looking at that going, there's, there's the wheels are turning. No, 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 I'm just uh, just wondering how well you're protected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's stop delaying this. Like, you know what's great about not starting a sketchy project is you haven't failed yet. It's really like, if you could just stay at this moment, you haven't failed, but you haven't completed the task. You could just quit now and we haven't failed, Don. Nah, let's get this thing up in the tree. Attempt one. We're gonna put a strap around the whole thing because it's uh, sketchy. Problem being is we got about three inches on this side where the tire isn't hitting the support, and uh, over here we have we have it kind of sits. So we have to kind of pivot it sideways ever so slightly, but otherwise I like the way it's positioned. The center of the car is sitting in un, right above the tree, and uh, likewise on the other side, it's sitting right in the middle of the tree. So that I feel that is pretty safe. If it's tippy. What I will do is put a uh, diagonal bracing on the thing, but uh, as it sits, it seems to be pretty solid. All right, let's head on up to see how sturdy or unsturdy it is. I got this 
tree stand ladder. Oh my, she's a little wiggly. All right, this is surreal. We, <laughs> we are, uh, we're driving to the trees. We got her to fly. Got some uh, housekeeping to do. Everything is kind of shaking around, but everything is intact. This is cool. Actually, it doesn't, it is shaky, but it's not crazy shaky. Like it doesn't feel like I'm gonna just kind of tip over. Oh yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> this is crazy. Where are the trees? Just gotta get myself set up here. I gotta get, uh, I'm gonna do my overnight. I think it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like, you don't have to worry about somebody coming and knocking on your window. Cause uh, well, you're like nine feet in the air, 10 feet in the air. It's like, it's like the perfect tree fort. It's like waterproof. It's sound nearly proof. It's like got insulation. It's watertight. And now I just gotta get all my creature comforts in here. I'm gonna do the, uh, do the overnight. And cause uh, yeah, I like it. I, this is like, this is, this is something. The view is perfect. I imagine if you wanted to, you could probably hunt right out of here. You could sit right like kind of sort of in the driver's seat check this view it's like perfect that's awesome it's a heck of a way down but it's awesome well i was figuring of setting up my camp and uh well it's not overly late it's getting significantly dark over there i don't know if you guys can see that it looks like there's a storm rolling in it's gonna be like I don't know. There's some uh, there's some angry weather on the horizon. Hopefully this uh, this cabin <laughs> sits up there. I think it's pretty safe based on the way it's wedged between the wood there. It should shouldn't shouldn't move. Although they are calling for 90 km an hour winds and hail and stuff. Although I am pretty protected in here. So, anyways, I'm gonna get my stuff up there, get myself set up. I'm gonna just have have myself some dinner. All right, we just gotta get the uh, battery pack set up so we got some lighting in here. It's gonna get dark mighty quick. Not only is it gonna get dark, I think it's gonna get stormy. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, seen any of the videos of actually the production of this thing, you actually look back and uh, watch the entire build of the uh, the van camper. It, uh, the link will probably be down below. You can actually see this whole thing getting built and I take this thing out on the road. Although it seems to be much more calm when it's in a tree. I don't know if you guys can see over on the side, I have a seat belt that holds my battery pack in place. Just put that in there and lock the seat belt in. And that allows you to actually hook your, if I can show that to you, see. Normally you just get outside and walk around, but uh, that's not really an option at this point. There's some lights. Oh, there we go. All right. That is pretty bright. Okay, we're rocking with lights. You still don't have to work too hard to get dry sticks. You can just take them off the tree beside you. Should be enough to take the edge off anyways. Light the stove. All right, now we're talking. Got her set up. Relatively good. We can watch this storm come in. The good thing about having a camper van slash cabin tree fort is that it's got lots of cup holders. <clears throat> Probably light a fire, take the edge off. It is relatively cool for being so late in the season. It's not even like it's almost the end of spring. We're almost into early summer and it's uh, surprisingly cool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my Coleman grill at the door, the door open. I can open the door and then I can have my grill right at the door. That being said, the driver's seat can probably come out now. Nobody's driving. What do I need? What do I need? What do I need? Oh, I need a propane. Where's my propane cylinder? Oh yeah. Like I put it. I 
think due to all the jostling, everything kind of moved around. Speaking of jostling, I think I lost my uh, the top on my stove. Oh, well, I'll make it work. We're cooking hot dogs. We're cooking some dogs. Hot dog, hot dog. Dinner of champion. Got the dinner of champions here. We got the uh, the old party mix and the old hot dog. You ever seen a brioche? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Brioche hot dog roll. They are something else. If you have not tried brioche bread, you've got to try it. It really it really ups your uh, your hamburger hot dog game. The only thing I don't like about it is that they cut them at the top. Who cuts the bun at the top? That's just strange. What do you guys like on your hot dog? I, I'm I'm a, I'm a uh, you know plain plain Jane kind of guy. I I enjoy just mustard. Something to be said for you know throwing a cabin up in a tree. If you want to build a cabin in a hurry, you can find scrap vehicles for scrap price. It's they're they're really cheap, and uh, if you've got the inclination to do so. Let's say this thing rots itself out and uh, and it's no longer viable. You actually can bring the van or your cabin or your car, whatever you decide to put out in the wilderness. Um, you bring it to the scrapyard and you make money. So in theory, in theory, this cabin is an asset. You take all the, the, the useful stuff. Maybe there's radio, maybe there's, um, you know, a good tires on it. You get all that stuff out and uh, you bring that to the scrapyard. <clears throat> now you're broken even and you got a really cool place to hang out. Maybe like put the, you could have many different ones, different locations. If you have a big property and you want like a, like a tree stand or something like that, this is, this is a great solution for that. Like a tree stand. It doesn't even have to be this high. It could just be parked on ground. I can't think of a better, you know, weatherproof box. And once you've established your cabin, you can always go and kind of go there and putter away at it. And when you're done, you just close the door, lock it up. It is essentially a vehicle at the at the end of the day. Going forward on this particular build project is I no longer need a driver's seat. Um, <laughs> it's kind of neat that it's there, um, but I could I could actually make more space by getting rid of the driver's seat, getting rid of the steering wheel. I could uh, add extra storage underneath where the engine was. That's that's a pretty good covered storage, even. Like, uh, I can see that being like firewood storage. So you have your firewood up, up above the ground and it's covered from the rain. You can just store it underneath your, uh, the hood of your car. And, uh, like possibly having some sort of deck on the outside would be useful too. So you don't have to, you don't have to be inside the vehicle. You can go out on your patio or your porch and, uh, sit with your, sit with your Muskoka chairs or something like that. Maybe barbecue outside and when it's sunny. The wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. You guys will have to stick around for that if uh, if you guys want to see that. I don't know. Maybe you guys got some really cool ideas. You should drop them down in the comments down below. What you'd see, what you would see, what would you would add to your, you know, your tree fort, tree car, tree fort cabin in the woods. Maybe like a canopy, like an awning that comes over the uh, patio. I turned the lights off so you can maybe see better. It kind of, it kind of feels like you're in like a helicopter, because like you can just kind of like slide the door open and, and all of a sudden you've got like at the door like it's just like, <laughs> or you get a cross breeze because you got both doors open. You can go from either side. Like I imagine, I've never been in a helicopter, but I imagine it's similar to this. You'd be like sitting next to the edge, and you'd be like. I don't know, this is like you got like perfect vantage point. I don't know if the rain's gonna settle in, as you can see. It just rained ever so slightly. It got dark and then it cleared up. And then there was funnel cloud warning. It does have a little bit of a sway. The sway is kind of concerning, but it's better than like not swaying. Because I think if it didn't sway, it would break. Oh, removable chairs so I can actually get into the front of the van. 
So the other thing I did when I when I removed the uh, the innards, when I removed the innards of the van, I uh, I clipped all the wiring harnesses so the uh, the power windows and door locks and stuff don't work anymore. Well, the locks still work, but they're not powered. And the windows don't work because they were powered. But uh, when we clipped them, we actually had the windows in the down position. And we're like, uh oh, it's gonna rain in here. So we actually took uh, a 12 volt battery and we hooked it up so we could just get the windows up. So that's probably another addition I'm thinking of doing is actually hooking up a 12 volt system in order to have all the functioning um, like windows, door locks and stuff like that, have those things still work even though there is no engine or battery or anything in the inside of it. That would be a feature because you could go in the front area and open the window if it gets too hot you open and close it you don't just open the whole entire door and then the rear uh windows they they kind of fold out like this and uh, you could have those opening and closing too if you wanted more airflow in here which would be kind of cool i don't know about the t the the what the heck is that called the tailgate itself whether or not uh it uh is powered and i can't remember during all the shaking and movement of this thing, I've lost the, the cap that goes in here. So I'm gonna use my pan. So I don't wanna be smoked out. This is an old coal uh, stove. It's got the like, shaker grates down below. So it's not the easiest thing to light. No shortage of firewood around here. I should have made it smaller before I brought it. figured out why I had a hard time lighting it. I had the damper somewhat closed. It was uh, in the sideways position. Turn the main lights off, maybe do a flashlight. Where's the button? That's better. Not better for you guys, it still looks the crazy bright. Oh. Can I let the fire die down? Oh, maybe I can turn you guys over here. Let the fire die down. Let's cool off a little bit. And it kind of takes the uh, takes the humidity out. Maybe you can get the humidity out of your out of your cabin. You'll have a way better sleep. Anyways, I think uh, that's pretty good. See you guys in the morning. Well, good morning guys. That was possibly the most restful sleep I've ever had in a car. Uh, oh. Fortunately, it didn't rain crazy and there was no really high wind. So I, I, it was just like, it just start, it just, just was quiet. Uh, normally I would uh, use a little, I have a little table behind you guys you guys wouldn't be able to see and uh, I'm cooking with propane so I'm going to put it by the doorway a deck out the front or the back I don't know which way it says the front which side's the back kind of like you can ultimate tailgating I think it would bring tailgating to a whole new level we should probably I would deck it out with like stuff from Cabela's Bass Pro shops like just just like to the nine sort of thing like i think gas barbecue lounger sort of thing like a little airy rug to kind of you know it's kind of like a perfect tree fort you, you sit out in the patio and when you're done for the day you stop it you get into your little cabin and you you uh you go to sleep for the night like this is perfect it's like the ultimate man tree fort or or it's a hunting stand or it's you know the sky's the limit on this bad boy well, if I was to rate this guy out of a 10, I'm saying it's like a, it's like a solid eight, eight, nine out of 10, meaning it's pretty darn cozy. It's quiet. I like that it's quiet. Like your sealed box, no creepy crawlies, you're up off the ground, nobody's gonna be like, 
hello come on into my van you got that area separation i firmly believe that you should spend money on anything that keeps you away from the ground whether it be like a mattress shoes tires and in this case we got like best of both worlds we got tires and a bed in the same one that keeps off the ground so that's like that's that's two for it's two for i don't know i hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh enjoy your coffee we'll see you on the next one good morning guys the first step's always the hardest part it's usually the highest part oh my <laughs>